Hi everyone, good day. My name is Madhuri Suresh and I'm the senior data center instructor here at Nitit Sharma Global Tech Private Limited. So today we're going to be continuing with the remaining advanced features of VPC which are also considered as the best practices for you to go ahead and enable. This is part two of the advanced features by the way. If you haven't checked out part one, please click on this I button above so that you're directed to that particular video. So let's start with today's session. The first feature that we're going to be discussing about is auto recovery reload delay. What is auto recovery reload delay? So what happens is let's assume both my pure devices have been reloaded. There is a certain delay timer that you will be configuring for this. This is by default. 240 seconds okay now let's assume both my peer devices have been reloaded and let's assume one of the peer device has come up first so anything let's say this one this has come up first once this device comes up it waits for a certain period of time how long it waits for whatever it is that you have defined again by default it is 240 seconds but you can always go ahead and change it the range being between 60 to 3600 seconds Whatever uh, period of time it is that you have mentioned, this device that has come up first waits for that period of time. Why does it wait? What is it waiting for? Waits for the other device to come up as well. If the other device does come up within this timer expiration, then in such cases, there is going to be an election process between them as to who should be elected as the primary and the secondary device. But let's assume that this device does not come up. Even at the end of 240 seconds, for example, this device is still not coming up. Then in such cases, whichever device has come up first and has been waiting will elect itself as the primary device irrespective of whatever may be its role priority whatever may be its mac address whenever this device comes up it sees that there is already a primary device so this device takes over the role as secondary so this is what auto recovery reload delay does the next feature that we are going to be discussing about is pure gateway What is Pure Gateway? So let's assume this is my primary device, this is my secondary device. Each of them will have their own local MAC address. So I'm going to say AAA as well as BBB over here. Okay. Now what happens is if either of these devices, so let's say um, there is some traffic that has been hashed towards my primary device, but then the destination MAC address is pointing to the MAC address of the other device, the peer or vice versa. If in case this particular device has received any traffic where the destination is pointing to the MAC address of my other device of my peer, right? So in such cases, by default, what happens is the traffic is going to be forwarded to the other device across the peer link so that the other device can process it and handle it accordingly. And same thing here also, because the secondary device in my case, this device has received uh, some traffic with the destination MAC address that is pointing to the other device's MAC address, it will use the peer link to forward the traffic across so that the so that the peer can handle this. But then you can see that there is a lot of utilization of the peer link. Peer link, yes, as we have discussed, can carry your control plane as well as data plane traffic. It is meant for traffic handling, yes, but it should be avoided as much as possible because it's very easy to oversubscribe the peer link. And if in case the peer link does get oversubscribed, then it could lead very easily to the failure of the peer link as well. And again, we have already discussed what happens if the peer link fails. So you should try to keep the traffic local to the devices as much as possible. So this is where Pure Gateway helps. What Pure Gateway does is once you have enabled the feature, it makes sure that both the peers are active for each other's MAC addresses. For example, um, by default, when you go on this device and when you check for the MAC address table, you will be able to see that it has learned the MAC address of the peer device through the peer link. And same thing here, you will be able to see that it has learned the MAC address of the peer device through the peer link. 
Once you have configured peer gateway, um, it makes sure that both these peers, both these devices are active for each other's default gateway, as in, sorry, remove that, okay? Um, so once you have enabled peer gateway, it makes sure that both of these devices are active for each other's gateway. So instead of learning, asterisk means that it has learned it. So instead of learning, you will be able to see the G, that is the gateway bit set. That means that this device is going to become active for the peers MAC address and this device is going to be active again for the peers MAC address. So now if in case they're receiving any traffic with the MAC address pointed to the peer, they now no longer have to forward it across the peer link. The traffic can be handled locally and sent across. Okay, so the peer link utilization you can see has been greatly reduced. No longer is the peer link required if there is any traffic that any of these devices are receiving that is pointing to the peer. They can handle it locally and they can process it locally itself. So a very, very useful command peer gateway. Again, this has to be enabled on both the devices. Please make sure that you are enabling it on both the devices. Um, Okay, please make sure that you're enabling it on both the devices. The next feature that we're going to be discussing about is delay restore. Please remember both peer gateway as well as delay restore, it's recommended that you enable it whenever you have any sort of layer three protocol. Um, what does delay restore do? So again, majorly whenever you have layer three, please just go ahead and enable it. So let's assume I have some layer three network and uh, I have a layer three peering between my peer devices as well as that layer three network. Uh, it could be OSPF, BGP, EIGRP, any protocol that you could be using. Now, normally what happens uh, without the feature, right? Normally what happens is, let's assume again, both of these devices have been reloaded. Once they come up, normally the member ports are immediately up, they will immediately start receiving traffic. But if there is any traffic that is pointing to the layer three network, that particular traffic will be immediately dropped. Why it will be immediately dropped? Because no matter what layer three protocol it is that you are using, it could be like I said, OSPF, BGP, EIGRP, whatever it is. Um, every layer three protocol will always require some convergence time. It does take a couple of seconds for it to uh, build its databases and to establish the neighborship, to establish the peering. So it does require a couple of seconds. You need to give it a couple of seconds. But before even giving it a couple of seconds, traffic is already probably pointing to this layer three it will get black hole, it will get dropped. So in order to avoid this, you have delay restore. So what delay restore does is it delays the activation of the VPC member ports by a couple of seconds. By default, this is for 30 seconds, but definitely you can go ahead and change it. So what that means is again, the same scenario, if both my peer devices have been reloaded, instead of immediately handling traffic, the VPC member ports are activated after 30 seconds. So that gives enough time for the layer three to converge as well. So now even if there's any traffic that is pointing to the layer three, it will not be dropped. It will be handled because that peering would have been established by then. So again, you can always go ahead and change this timer as well, ranging between one to 3600 seconds. By default for member ports, it is 30 seconds. The last feature that we're going to be discussing about is self-isolation. Now, what is self-isolation? So let's assume this is my primary device, this is my secondary device. And if on the primary, I'll write it here. If on the primary, I, you, I lose both my peer link as well as member ports. If on the primary device, I lose both my peer link as well as the member ports. Now, what will happen? Peer link is down, the peer keep alive is up, 
pure link is down so on the secondary device also the pure link is down so again because it knows that the primary device is actually up but the pure link is down what the secondary device is going to do it is going to go ahead and put its member ports into suspension state it wouldn't know there is uh, no synchronization of the member ports between the two devices so it wouldn't know that the member port on the primary is also down but now eventually what happens in a normal scenario both sides my member ports are down one side because of a failure it's down and the other side because this pure link is down it's ha it has put it into suspension so basically my vpc traffic has completely come to a halt right so in order to avoid this self isolation is recommended that you go ahead and configure please remember this particular features of self isolation will only work if you have enabled it on both the boxes if you have enabled it on either also it is not going to function now um if or after you have configured self isolation what happens is if this particular failure scenario takes place right so after you have enabled self isolation on both of these boxes let's assume that the failure scenario has occurred on the primary i have lost both my pure link as well as my member port connectivity now what happens because you have configured self isolation the primary is going to send self isolation messages to the secondary but how is it going to send it this is the only exception it is going to use the pure keep alive link between the two devices to send these self isolation messages towards the secondary because that's the only path that is available right now so it uses this pure keep alive link to let the secondary know that there is a drastic failure that has taken place on the primary what the secondary does is it is going to change its role take over the role as operational primary while the primary is going to put itself into an isolated state once on the primary the failure scenarios have come up they have been rectified then of course this device will come up as usual it sees that there is already an operational primary device and over here it takes over the role as operational secondary so this is what happens self isolation on the primary device whenever there is a failure of both your pure link as well as member ports and uh, to be honest this particular failure scenario is quite rare it's uh, very uncommon that you lose both the uh, both the pure link as well as the member ports but if in case you do you do have uh, you know you do have a feature that is going to take care of it so once you have enabled it primary uses the pure keep alive link which is the only active link available uh, to let the secondary know that it is going to put itself into isolation and ask the secondary to basically change its role and take over so secondary is then going to change its role take over as operational primary and this device is going to be put into an isolation state once these links have been rectified they are up then this device will take over the role as operational secondary because it sees that there's already an operational primary device okay so this is what self isolation does with this we come to an end for the vpc series i hope all of you enjoyed if there are any questions please do leave them in the comment section below and we will definitely get back to you thank you for watching please like share and subscribe to our channel i'll see you all very soon thanks everyone